Welcome back to the second half of the second round coverage of the Summit Spring Fling brought to you by the Summit DGA and the Birdie Disc Golf Supply uh, Company. This is 10 holes, a modified version of Portage Lakes Disc Golf Course. You're watching on Heiser Flip Productions. Be sure to give us a subscription. Subscribe below as we're checking it out. Looking forward to some exciting second half action. All right. On hole 10, we're sitting at a tie at the lead. Nick Schultz and Mark Fedorenko at four down. Matt Hill just behind them at three down. Had a strong finish to his front nine. Andy Martin scratched back to even. And don't count Sam Core out quite yet. He is a par machine sitting at plus two right now. Definitely shaved a few strokes. So he's going to see. He's going to. Sam needs to have a much better back 10 than he did front nine. All right, hole 10, par 3, 366-foot hyzer line. They call this the postcard. Well, not yet, but they should because it's hard to play Portage Lakes and not take a picture with this iconic like lighthouse basket located on the edge of the water. It's a beauty and a beast, a tough hole with an amazing view. Fresh coat of paint on there last year. That flag is iconic. Let's see how Andy starts off. He was back of the box to start the day, front of the box on the back 10. Sunglasses off, wants to see where he's going, wants to see that beautiful lakefront view. Such a tricky gap off the tee pad here. Decision. Hangs it out wide. Okay, looks like he's behind that little set of trees there, behind the basket uh, that we saw. Makeable putt, but it's going to be a tough one. I don't know if he's going to have a good uh, lie. Let's see what Nick does. Nick hits the gap on Heiser. And yeah, he appears to be a little short. Looks like he finished back by the short basket there. All right, one wide right, one a little left. Let's see if Matt Hill can uh, course correct and get that gap right in the center. Wow. Oh, going. Oh, huh. Looks like it was a, a tree. But it's fortunate skip based off some of his card mates uh, reaction there. So maybe not too bad to try and get that one. Is Gonna Mark going forehand? Looks like it, yes. Oh, Been pretty man. dominant forehand off tee boxes thus far. Oh, such a touch for forehand. And I mean, there's just too many trees in the way. I would think in the middle of the summer that shot's not impossible, but much harder when all the leaves come into these trees. I wouldn't mind if a few more trees fell on this hole and opened up a forehand gap, personally. Sam off the tee, hung it out right, hits a tree. He's going to have a tough hop shot. Looks like we got Mark here first. Looks like he's got a nice little gap to the basket. Got to put some touch on it. How far behind the lighthouse do you think that water is? Oh, less than five feet, BC. Well, that's a tough one. He's got to get right there. Oh, hits a tree, Oof. bounces left. I mean, that's intimidating to look at that, knowing that it's got to be almost perfect or you're in the water. This back nine, back ten, for that matter, has some teeth. I'll tell you what, starting with this whole hole ten, it is no gimme. I mean, it's a pretty hole. It's the cover hole with the big lighthouse. Sam gets it up, mm, hits another tree on the way to the basket. Mark and Sam both hitting that tree there. They'll be hoping for a par after that start. Not a par, bogey. Yeah, they're going to be a bogey at best. Let's see if Matt can get a little flick up there and get himself a par run. He's going to have a long putt for par. Flag doesn't look like it's moving terribly bad, so I think the wind isn't as bad as it was that you saw in the drone video when it was really going. So I think their putts may be a little bit safer shot to get them. Yeah. Yeah. And that'll give Sign Sam it. his bogey. It should. Yeah. 
Nice up shot. That was the Sam and Mark show. We didn't see either of our card mates. Really. It's like Nick Part, the short basket. <laughs> he is right underneath it. Lays it up. Smart play. Yeah, the wind's kicking up a little bit there. You can see uh, going from left to right. Yeah. Oh, Andy, really bad. Andy's Wait. in the stuff. But he's close to the basket. Should be a pretty routine up and down for him. Oof. Yeah, he got it up he, there. Yeah, I think he rolled in, but that looked wide out of the hand. I was a little nervous there. Yeah, it looked like he threw it straight towards the water there, BC. Matt's looking at the wind. This is for his par. That is a, a run. That's a doozy right there. CT Luna up. Oh, just just short. That's a good miss, though. Yeah, I didn't see 100% full commitment there. I felt like there was about 70% power on that. Just a nerve-wracking putt looking at the water. Especially with a headwind coming off the water. It is a gorgeous view, though. Those are some amazing homes and restaurants across the water there. Portage Lake State Park, Akron, Ohio. New Franklin, Ohio. Beautiful place if you haven't got out there. A lot of great courses in Summit County, Akron, Cleveland, Canton. This is one of the premier ones. We're all finishing off there. Bogey for Matt. Par for Andy. Nick in for par as well. All right, hole 11 lost a tree last year, uh, making it a little bit easier off the long tee. And probably one of the easier par fours, as you can see, playing just under four today. A 436-foot hole. Uh, there is OB left-hand side, though I find it unlikely that it'll come into play for them. But we'll see uh, as they get up there. I think our card should be able to do pretty well with this one. Pretty open this time of year. Andy flips up an un understable driver right in the middle of the fairway. That's exactly what he wanted. This one plays a little easier from the long pad as a par four. The short from from long pad to short basket is a tough par three. Well, as I was saying, there used to be a tree right there, almost in front of where Nick was, even last year, which made it a much different game. Nick, Nick might have overturned it, but he got a good distance out of it there. Just looking to escape disaster by early trees and get it up in the middle of that fairway. Oh, hits a branch. He's going to fall short. Birdie not out of the question, though. He can still get up and down. Mark. Oh, no, a first tree hit. Oh, Mark, that's tough. That's tough. He's got a long way to go. Especially after just bogeying 10, letting Nick take sole possession of the uh, round so far of the tournament. So, yeah, that's a tough one. This could be a turning point for sure. Sam Court, understable driver, flips it up through the gap. And he pushes up left side, which is good. That should be an easy up shot. Mark moved about uh, 15, 20 feet up a little to the right of where he was from his tee shot. It's tricky from down here. I've been here before. Forehand. Catches a late tree, but he's up in the fairway. Be able to hopefully get a scramble and save that one. Matt, a little further back than he would have liked, but see if he can force one up here through a gap. Quite a few trees between him and the basket. Basically a poke and hope. I think uh, he got pretty hopey. I think he was all right there. I heard a tree in the end there. We'll see where he ends up. Mark throwing three already. He looks, looks to be still about 125, 150 feet out. Looks 
that beforehand. Great oh, shot. No. Oh, right underneath it. Touches pole at the very end. What a save. After that first shot and the bogey, didn't get demoralized. Gonna save that par and hold it. He needed that one. All right, Sam Court here. Put himself in a good position to get up and down. He doesn't like it. No, when you're begging for it to hit tree on the route, it's not what you want it to do. He did not like that. I think that's the commentator curse there. Matt Hill, great drive. No, absolutely. Actually, this is his third shot. Yes. Yeah, he'll be laying two. He needs to get this up there to get that par uh, save as well. This shows you what a couple low-hanging branches on the drive. Put him about 30 feet back where he wanted. Hit some more trees. All right, it's just like that. One little branch uh, takes you from birdie to bogey very quickly. This is where you need course karma, so you can hit those lines and get lucky through the trees. I'm going to guess like by those groans, it was not what he wanted it to be. Sounds like he hit a late tree. Let's hope he's got a putt at it. Andy Martin for his upshot. Yeah, finally getting to Andy's drive here. Beautiful drive there. Unreal. Such a great disc, that A3. He's in the circle. A little farther than he wanted, but he, a uh, strong putter, should be able to uh, sink that. This is Nick Not Schultz's drive. Wow. Looks like he put it right underneath the basket as well. What a shot. Uh, Matt just putting it up to circle one. Sam seemed, seemed disappointed in this shot, but... He looks to be in circle one. I'm not sure if we missed a shot here. He's in for par, so yeah, I guess we missed his upshot. Federico tapping out for his par. Good save after hitting first available. Like I said, this hole's a little forgiving playing long to long because it is a par four. Yeah, it's only one of two or three holes that plays under par. Most of the holes here today playing over par, combining all the different divisions that we're there. Andy, under par now with that birdie. Look out. He started a little slow, even a few pars, but these last uh, six, seven holes has really come on strong. Nick answering, though, with that, taking a commanding two-stroke lead now uh, over Mark with a negative five on the day. Matt Hill drops to... One under. All right, hole 12. Tougher than it looks. Hole 12 is a downhill par 3, 352 feet playing above par today, thanks to the many trees between the tee pad and the basket, which, like several long baskets of Portage, is placed really close to the lake. This is a tricky hole, BC. What about it? Okay. Andy Four. Martin on the tee. I've been fired for a long time. There's a path there, but it is precariously placed, as many baskets are here. Looks like Andy's opting to throw a mid here. Just get out of the hand. Oh, catches a late tree, puts him in the bush. He should have a look at the basket from down there, though. It's that dry. inches from that one tree there. Right on the edge. Yeah. Right. Circle's edge. Dang, that's right. Good right. drive. Same circle's edge, so heck of a drive. He seems to be happy with it. Nick Schultz, our leader. Let's see what he can do here on hole 12. Bird talking a little smack out there. Ooh. Uh oh. Wow. Nick kicks left, and that's going to be tricky from there. Yeah, that is the wrong way. If you're going to kick, you don't want to go left towards 13th fairway. You want to definitely go closer uh, to the right. Our leader's in trouble, and Andy, Mark, Matt, Sam, they're all smelling blood. 
going backhand if there's such a forehand drive. Uh -oh. Let's see if you put enough touch on it. Yeah, looks like he's over, over there, there with Andy. Yeah, over by Andy. I don't yeah. think he hit anything. A little too much, but should be able to get to the par. Sam has learned anything from the other people that have gone ahead of him so far. I'm gonna try a similar yeah. thing. Oh, oh, I thought that was that was looking like the ideal line gonna come back in, but good. Trees happen out here, Portage Lakes. That is up. Yeah, wide from the hand, I think. Kinda knew it there. Looks like Nick is over in the left side of the fairway. A lot of Looks branches, a lot. Hey, look, he doesn't even, he's not even sure what to do. There's so little shots available to him right now. Trying to find he's, that magic disc. He's got a two stroke lead on Fedorenko right now and four strokes on Matt and Andy. Let's see if he can get up and down for par. Also, always an issue here at Portage with the leaves and the trees that are falling down. Oh, my God. Ooh, Kitch is an early tree. He is still in the rough. Sam with a safe up shot. Bending right. Stay away from the water. Looks like he got the circle's edge. We have a bit of a scary putt, though, with that water in the background. They're all scary putts out here, BC. Matt, kind of a similar shot as Sam. Pretty open. He's got a couple little gaps. The question is, how much do you push it to the basket, or do you kind of take Sam and play it a little safe? He's throwing a pig, so he doesn't want to overturn this. Stable right now. Stable. Uh, I think he threw a bit of an anti line. Is that too much? It looks like he overturned it. They were calling for it to come back, but it is a pig. It may be in the water. We'll see what happens. Nick's still frustrated with his lie. He needs to get close to the basket with his third shot. Beautiful background with some pontoon boats cruising on by. Yeah, it's been a rough start to the disc golf season in Northeast Ohio, so it was nice to see great weather for the summer spring. Oh, another kick of a tree for Nick. See a little bit of frustration on his face here. Nick out again. Back. Oh, oh no. I think that might be what. Nick is putting five, I believe. I'm pretty sure. Oof. May have had a bleep in there as well. That audio. Nick, a little frustrated. Tough hole. Hole 12 has been tough. That's what happens though. Pick any hole here. It can happen very, very quickly. Absolutely. He might even lose his lead here on this hole. Depends on what Mark can do. That's yeah. a good safe run. All right. There he goes. We'll get the finish there. So we got Andy for a birdie. As well as me. Looks like he's got some bush in his way, though. This might be a little safe floaty run. Yeah, it looks like he's going to try a little up and over. Looks like he might be throwing his disc upside down. I think it is upside down. Yeah, he's just laying it up there. So especially, upside... with, especially with Nick OB, maybe. Uh, and so he's turning it upside down. Is that to help it kind of catch when it hits the ground more? That's correct. This way it doesn't jump up on edge and roll. And I think both, the same. after watching what Nick is doing, and if they're watching the score, it doesn't behoove you to try and go there. It looks like they're talking out of bounds here for Matt. Yeah, it makes sense for them to lay up. Nick's going to lose strokes anyway. Uh, don't take a chance to be like one of the other guys that ends up on. Yeah, that's a good comebacker for Bogey there, Matt. Bogey after the unfortunate water. 
Nick looking a little bit dejected there as he's walking his putt. Sam finishes off. A bogey as well, taking him to plus four. Oh, I thought Nick had kicked over into the water, but he kicked over the behind the basket. No, that was a uh, triple, triple bogey. bogey. Plus three, taking Six. Nick to two under. Uh, Mark at three under. Uh, lost the lead. Mark back in control of the tournament, and Andy playing strong. Hole 13, we're going to go back the other way from hole 12. A little bit of an uphill to start the shot. Par three, 300 feet, playing uh, over par 3.41. You can also see here we're playing an island green with an elevated basket. We're playing the second basket there. So shorter shot, lots of potential bad landing areas. Up top. It's a very tricky basket location back there, especially being elevated with the OB directly behind it. Andy catches that tree. That tree gets hit so many times. Our new leader, Mark Fedorenko, on the tee at three down. Oh, catches a tree. So catching a tree. A little bit farther up, though. Might be okay for that shot. Going to be a tough one to run for both of them because of that island green and that elevated basket. Sam catching a tree as well. Early tree kicks him left into a really tough part of the fairway here. Having a tough second round. He had a really hot first round, but he is uh, really struggling so far in the second round. Quarters legs will do that to you. Matt Hill here. Yeah. Mark likes it. That's a good right. spot to be. Right up, set there. Right up there, kind of near the edge of the parking lot. Can toss it on over to the green and hopefully get that par. See what Nick can do here. Uh, see if he lets that kind of mental game, right? This is where the mental and the trees come into play. He Absolutely. wash away, hold, uh, hold 12 and uh, nail this drive. Sounds like a boat in the background, I guess. <laughs> Nick didn't like it. He did not like it. After that last <laughs> hole, he was not feeling it. He mean mugged them. Uh, look good out of the hand. Let's see how far up he can get. Oh, oh catches a late tree. He's yeah. in a good spot, though. Not what he wanted, ideally, but definitely up there, especially compared to what Andy and Mark did, the people who he is now chasing. Sam's off to the left. I've been there before. It is not easy. I think he's just going to want to lay it up right before the road, concede his four here. Catches another tree. He can recover from that drive and get it up uh, close to the basket. Risk reward if you try to go to the island from this far back on the fairway. Going to climb footing there. Looks good out of the hand. Can, ooh, catches the late tree near the road. Let's hope he stayed in bounds. And it's hard to tell where he landed. Mark after his tree hit. A little forehand flick. Oh, Mark's nice. The island. Good shot, Mark. That is a good recovery from that drive. Sam laying two here, taking his third shot. Just wants to get on that island. That's a good does. shot. Here looks like he's going to take a bit of a putt. He's just laying that up there, hoping he doesn't go a B. Very good shot. Nice it up, touch. touches the pole. Take that. Nick to his drive. Probably the same. I don't expect him to run it, but maybe after that last hole. Nick's running everything. 
Except for this one. Yeah, that was definitely not a full run. That was not. Now, if he was full run, he'd be over. He was maybe conceding after that last one, seeing where he's at. And he probably doing the same. And he puts it close. Up for bogey for Sam. It's gonna be a couple pars here. Full playing tough for them. Mark in for par. That's a big par right there. Hard working par man. Strikes again. He's a hard working par man. At this point, it's a par game. Like, the way these guys are going right now, the way they're having some struggles with the trees, no one's really running away with it, so Mark is doing exactly what he needs to do, is just maintain. Absolutely. All right, on to hole 14. This is a tricky one. Par 4, 579 feet can be a nightmare for players with water on the right and a raised hill like fairway and a basket near the water. Combined with numerous trees, there's a lot of room for error. Averaging 5.24 today, clearly one of the hardest holes on the day. Any player would be ecstatic to get a par here. Get a birdie and you can make a huge jump on the field. Uh, once again, I don't have the stats, but I have to imagine very few birdies on this hole. I think you're happy. To get Absolutely. You can see that intimidating drive, that lake on the right-hand side. I mean, that is, yeah, it's a lot to look at. Our leader, Mark Fedorenko, turns one over. Let's see if it'll come back and sit on the good side. There oh, it what? is. That's nice a good shot. spot to be. Yeah, he is going to like that. It's going to give him away from the water. I think he's taking a deep breath as he walks off the tee pad. He did cut that in a little early. Matt Hill, let's see what he can do here. Mm, nice shot. Okay. All right, he will also take that. A little shorter, but definitely where he wants to be. It's going to be a long poke from there to get all the way to the basket. Nick Schultz on the tee. Going to try the forehand route. You know, I always go forehand on this one. Just kind of let it flip down there, get into the open. He catches a late tree, though. Might have enough of the path, though, down that uh, hilly fairway. And he also going to go forehand. Set it down in that fairway. And That's does. the way to do it. Fortunate tree. <laughs> See if Sam can recover. Let's hit some trees here on the drives. He can find that path. Get him a momentum type hole here. This would be a big one. Even a par here would be a big momentum. Oh, catches an early tree. It's going to be a long way to the basket for Sam. He's likely just going to end up laying up from here. If he tries to push it over the water, it's a, about a 300 foot water clear from where he's at. Kind of try and get up there by the short tee area, somewhere on the fairway. Is that your best spot here? I would assume so. At this point, you need to be a little more cons conservative and he goes Trying over to the save short your car. Oh, right yeah. past the cameraman. Almost hit the Gabriel. Or <laughs> hit Gabe out there. Nick with a tough lie. Anytime you don't know which way to go, left or right. Looking up and looking down. Not going to change. I'm assuming he's just going to throw a little forehand to get her up and around the corner. Uh, just a forehand layup. Yeah, just to get up there. Once again, positioning. If he can take that shot and then try and get up to uh, there, give himself a problem. All right, Matt Hill looks like he wants to go over the water. Got to catch some strokes here, take some chances. He's up. Sonheiser coming in towards the green. Ooh. Oh, no, a late tree. That's definitely water. Card saying that they don't think he crossed in bounds. So he has the option to throw from his previous lie or move closer to the water and re throw with penalty. Andy looking like he's lining up to throw over the water. So does he get a minute to choose? Does he get to let Andy go and if he decides he can come back and try and take it again? 
That's correct. Okay. Andy gonna take the same shot, trying to avoid that tree that Matt just did. Wow. Oh my. Wow. Whoa. Great Laced shot. It. Great right shot. Right into it. Nestled up against that hill. Puts him within a definite, definite birdie attempt. That's nice. a tricky gap to hit over there near that long basket. Really takes a touch shot. Nick throwing three here. Looking like he's lining up a shot over the water. Asking for it to get through, and it does. Hits the hillside, rolls down towards the basket. He's going to be happy with that. A little layup uh, worked. Question at the time, but definitely got him to where he wanted to be to take that shot. It's, it's, it's not great from right here. No. It's up to so, which is really touchy when you got a high too. This is where Matt's trying to figure out what he wants to do. He can either take it right up on water's edge or anywhere back in line with the basket. Okay, because he didn't go, didn't clear it on the other side, but he cleared it here, so he gets to come back a little bit. So he's going to go. Looks like he's, over. he's setting up right on water's edge. Tricky footing right there. That orange flag where the spotter said he went out of bounds, is that where we're making this? I would assume, or maybe that's a part of the OB line. Okay, so he's going to try and take a little, just hyzer, get it around over the water again. A footing here. He hits in. So there is a white OB line up there, BC. I think the card's telling him that he is not in bounds. He went past it? It's out of bounds. He never crossed in bounds. He didn't cross the white line and it hit it all. So for safety, for safety, the TD put a white line at the top of the hill so folks wouldn't throw down in the muck. However,. To get across, be on dry land, and not have crossed that white line, that's got to be disheartening. Oh, my goodness. So he's throwing again. Oh, Took another, another one. He's going to need those fishermen to get the discs out of the water. Those guys are sitting there trying to catch fish, and I don't think it's helping. That hill he's... with three in the water. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. He's going to take it again. Lane one. Lining up the exact same shot. More straight this time. Oh, oh. No. oh no. That's four in the water. BC. It hurts oh to goodness. watch it. I, I'm, I'm sad for him right now. He has to keep taking it. He's going to have to keep yep. taking the shot till he crosses over. And this boat just pull, pushing in on his line, too. Yeah, they're kind of watching him go. And no, uh -oh. no, no, Matt uh -oh. Hill. I don't even know what I'm at. I don't know what you're at either. Well, we've all lost count, Matt. Oh, Matt, come on, just get it up and over. And this fisherman's kind of not helping his cause, as you said. He is not slowly encroaching in on his line, and Matt's feeling pressure and frustration build. Oh it's no! It's again. Oh no! Oh god! I believe that was one of the guys on the boat that said that's an expensive hole. Yeah, he's not. I got to tell you, I oh. am not. Oh, he just ran up there, tossed a forehand. Oh, no. No, no. That's like a joke, man. I feel bad for you. Oh, boy. Safe. Is that five or six in the water so far? I think I've that's lost six count. in the water right there. Six in the water. He's just trying to forehand flick it, and he is just no time, no care. Uh, he is just struggling, lays it up right next to the short basket after at least six, maybe seven in the water. The fisherman, that is, I don't know I don't know what to say. I'm still, I know Mark's coming up. He's taking a high hyzer shot outside, but I got to tell you, Mike, I am still in disbelief of what just happened with Matt Hill. I don't know, I don't know if I've ever seen that many in the water at one time. Like, that is an, speechless. I don't even know what to say. Matt Hill plays a place here every day too. Um, I, I hate it for him. So what do you? 
Like, put yourself in that spot, Mike. Like, what do you do now? Like, do you just play? I mean, no, you got to kind of play it out. But what is your head at right now? After you just putting... got to laugh it off. I mean, unfortunately, you know, he's only a couple strokes out of the lead going into this hole. And now he's really put himself behind. I just, there's no words, BC. There's no words to explain the emotions that go through your head after you throw six of your Frisbees in the water on one hole. Oh, yeah, I mean, he's Sam? at least a 13 or 14, 15, oh, something like that. 16. Sam trying to get an upshot up to there. And Andy, right. meanwhile, and even Nick is just sitting there, just watching these guys uh, throw a lot of frisbees. I've lost track of everybody else because I was so focused on trying to figure out what Matt's throwing over here. That is, gosh, that's a real shame. Mark up for three, looks like. Bag a lot uh, lighter. Here's the benefit. Bag's a lot lighter. Bag's a lot lighter than when you started, Matt. That's your uh, goal there. Uh, yeah, but going into 15, discs. 16, 17, 18, he might need some of those discs. I'm not sure if they if they got them all back or not. That's a good point. These are by far some of the tougher holes, Matt, kind of just pitching up there a little bit. Trying to smile. I know he's trying to be a good yeah. sport about it. Uh, and of all days to have the camera crew from Heiser Flip Productions following the lead card here at the Summit Spring Fling. Ooh, he's going to remember this one for years. And yeah, it's on video. <laughs> We're all going to remember that one for years. Be a good sport, Matt. Uh, you know he is. He's uh, he's taking it like a champ. So. You Damn. know, I saw him after the round, and he, he was trying his best to laugh it off, but it's just hard to forget a hole like this. Yeah, and this coverage, not going to help. Not going to help. Thankfully, his brother Mike is a gentle soul who never makes fun of him. Oh, yeah. Let's see what Nick does here. This is his par putt here. So if he can make this after watching what Matt did, Mark's uh, got a couple extra strokes. Big par putt for Nick. He needs this. Not an easy putt downhill. Water behind it. No problem for Nick. Pulls it off. That's a big putt right there. With Andy about to take the birdie, more than likely we'll see... A little bit of a test. Of was that he Raptor it. legs from Nick there? It might have been a little bit. He went running down. He gave a, a little... Ricky Raptor from Nick Schultz. It's a lake monster back there. Andy up and in for birdie. Nice shot. Andy picks up, I don't know, 15 strokes on Matt Hill on this hole. Something Picked like that. Picked up a lot of strokes on Matt Hill. He's right now. It's a... <laughs> Definitely, and we don't uh, know some of the other players right now in the tournament, but it looks like going to be a three-person race heading into uh, the last 15, you know, six holes here uh, with Mark, Nick, and Andy. Wow. I'm still speechless about Matt. Right a good one. I'm curious to see what he finishes off with. I know we lost track of it. That was, that was surreal to watch. It was like a... Again and again, and then even his little forehand flick to just put it away and get up there. Mark took the par. That's a strong par right now, given everything that's, that's happened. He's feeling good. You got to feel great with the par here on 14. And with the double bogey They're still plus trying seven. to count Matt's strokes here. Let's see what the scoreboard says after this. Plus something. 14 times bogey. I don't think he even marked that one, so I had, had another stroke to it. 14... Plus, plus 14 on that hole. Ouch. Okay, moving on. Hole 15. BC? Uh, par 4, uh, 478 feet. You can see here it averages a little bit over par in the day. Pretty open shot for a drive comparatively. That water there is going to play as casual relief. But the basket, Mike, precariously placed right on the hill. Steep drop off behind it. That water bottle hopefully gone. Uh, they got a little bit of room to drive here. But then it gets a little tighter as they get closer to the basket. Yeah, you want to poke your drive as far over that hill as you can. This way you're, you don't have a nerve-wracking putt on that elevated basket right on water's edge. Andy throwing overstable X2. Can he get it up over the hill? Oh, yeah. That is back-to-back -back solid oh, drive wow. by Andy. He is cranking right outside the water. The footing's going to be good. Two, three feet ahead of that. That's it's beautiful. Gonna be, yeah, that's right where he wants it. That's beautiful. I'd give anything to be able to throw one over the hill like that. Especially here, he can now just lay up and still probably get a birdie. Let's see if Mark can answer. Ooh, catches a tree. He's still in the fairway, though. Take it. 
Nick Schultz on the tee. Oh God. Doesn't like it. Oh, he's that is not a good kick. I mean, Mark is way farther left. He kicked, but he's at the base of the hill. Nick is heading back to, towards the short tee. There's a lot of shrubs over there. It'll be a tough shot. I've been there before, BC. It's not a, not a, not an easy up and down from over there. Sam and Matt just need some good throws. You need to Absolutely. leave this day with confidence. We needed that to Heiser flip. It did not, and he catches an early tree. Won't get past the hill. No, so let's see how Matt responds, right? Big thing here, right? You suffer that, one of the worst holes he's probably ever scored. Let's see what Matt does. That's a nice-looking line. Mm, he's mm. over there near the short pad. Looks like he caught in a bush. He'll be yeah, looking at it. it's going to be Might a tough have a step out. Yeah, it's really hard to forget about a hole like that. You know, you got what, four or five holes to play. You gotta, you just gotta forget about it, move on, and 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 play your game. Hopefully, you got the discs that you need for the next couple of holes. It's hard though. It's so difficult. Sam putting it over there just gets it to the crest of the hill. Yep, he didn't want to mess around with trying to get up and around the corner there. He's now that water, is so forward. casual, makes it tough because you don't want to land in it, right? You don't want to kind of have wet disc and that rough footing around the edge. That's correct. And that dries up during the summer months, but you know, this time of the year it is full and it does play as casual rel relief. Most of these other courses in Ohio, no, this area would be pretty wet. Portage drains very well. Absolutely. Mark puts it up over there near the casual relief area. Didn't see exactly where that went in. That's just dandy. Just dandy to and take another He's open hey, for a par. Our golf is the way to go right now. Mark, that's all you got to play. Nick, With overhand an overhand shot. shot. Wow. Oh, hits a branch, grabs a branch, falls back down. Not what Ouch. he wanted. He doesn't like it. He's running it, though. He I'm likes happy it. With that. A little fist bump from Nick Schultz. He's like, finally. That's what I'm talking about. Gets he's under still that basket. in this. He's still in this. Even after that six on hole 12, he's he's right there. Find some footing in that bush. He definitely got a tough little lie there. Just trying to flick it up, get close. Matt's sitting at plus 14 on the tournament after hole 14 really bit him. It's Ouch. surreal to look at at the bottom. I don't mean to keep bringing it up, and uh, but every time I look down, it just catches my eye it, like it's a typo. Kyle Miller and Heiser Flip Productions accidentally put too many in there. but Well, he learned his lesson today. Let's hope he never does that again. Sam Court, he's throwing three. Just want to put it close, but don't push it over that hill's edge. It does roll down steep to the water. Nice touch. He's over there. He'll be putting in a good spot, not looking up over the water's edge. On the side is where he want to be. Meanwhile, Andy walking up to his drive, just trying to lay it up for the birdie. That is a, unbelievable. That's a showy. That's a moment there, right? He's like, look who's come to play. By the way, fellas, a thousand plus rated player here, highest on the card. Here I come, Andy Martin. Nice one. A few holes to go. He's in. A, he's in a good position to try and take this lead. Matt Hill laying up. He'll concede his par. So here's the tricky part about the casual relief area. So if you want, you can throw from in there. If not, you have to take it from behind your lie. So you're gonna get your feet wet. And it looks like Mark does not want to take the casual relief. He's going to get his feet wet. Find something. He's trying to minimize the amount of water uh, to shoe uh, ratio there. Goes for it. Oh, oh and wow. sinks it in. Nice. Well hey, worth it. It worked out. Absolutely. Now, if you missed that putt and go long and you got a foot, wet foot, it wasn't worth it. But he made it. And he's okay with walking to the next hole with a wet foot. Giving him some love, appreciating that. Let's see if Sam can finish this off. I think this is for Bogey.
Oh, my bad. Yeah, I'm in Sorry, for par. par yeah. Don't give me extra strokes. Sam finishes strong in four. That was a great up and down for Sam. Andy Martin for his birdie. Andy. Just like that. At two under now. Only one stroke off the lead. Every single person on this card, by the way, thus far, Mike, shooting over for the day. Nick two over. Mark one over. Matt a lot over. Sam started at one under. And Andy four under so far through 15 holes. He is the one playing the strong second round. Played Against Sports in Cuyahoga Falls has one of the biggest selections of discs, new and used, and disc golf accessories in all of Northeast Ohio. They have the top brands, the biggest selection of the newest releases, and those special edition hard to find discs. They carry Innova, Discraft, MVP, Legacy, Dynamic Discs, Westside Discs, Infinite, Castaplast. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. They even carry Dino Discs, those easy to fly and low weight discs that are perfect for the kids or grandma to get them on the course and help grow the sport. Played Against Sports has more than just Frisbees. They carry hats, towels, minis, bags, carts, you name it. Anything that can get you on the course and help you throw better. Oh, all right, well, they're not going to help with your form, but they're going to have you looking like a pro no matter how good your game is. It is not just disc golf equipment here at Played Against Sports Cuyahoga Falls. They have new and used sporting goods equipment from every single sport that you and your family love including a lot of these great sports you see here in the store every day. Golf. Not put all three in. <clears throat> Baseball. Exercise equipment. Oh. Played Against Sports in Cuyahoga Falls is located at 661 Howe Avenue, Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio. You can call the store anytime at 330-922-0606. hole 16 another one of the sig signature holes here at portage lakes we did cut a branch off over the winter thank you dave ernst and justin trepka it demands an over the water for the almost and almost the entire flight par three coming in at 312 feet this hole takes trust in your form and frisbee andy martin sitting at two under one stroke off the lead let's see if he can put it in bounds playing the hot back round so far Looks good on Heiser. Oh yeah, safe shot, gets it in bounds. He is sitting there for birdie. You think for these guys who have played a lot here, Mike, do you think the water intimidates them on a hole like this, or is this a little easier compared to being like on the edge of a basket? I don't think they're worried about the water. It's a 312 foot shot to them, and they're not even thinking about it. A lot of branches though. Mark shedding a layer, sun's coming out there. Turned out to be a beautiful day. Representing Pittsburgh disc golf. Thanks, Mark, for coming to Akron, Ohio. All right, our leader, a little low, needs an air bounce. Oh. Does oh. not make it in bounds. He will go to the drop zone. Leave a disc here in Akron, Ohio as well. Lake Bench. I got a few discs in there. Mike. I got three or four. So here's what they're arguing about. If you read the OB sheet here, it says if your drive from the long tee pad does not come to rest in bounds, you go to the drop zone. Now you always have the option to throw from your previous lie if you do go OB. So he has two options at this point. Looks like they're debating right now options. and whether he went over then the ability to retee as you said his options 
back. It'll be, it'll be throwing yeah, three, right? Three. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. For sure. All right, I'd be throwing three from the Now, is that yeah. last, yeah. or do you go to the shot? I think, do you go last, then, after everybody? Now they're debating what order to go, and lots of conversations there. I think the rules are pretty clearly laid out in the uh, instructional panel, or instructional packet from our TD, but in the moment, some confusion. Nick Schultz, over the water. No problem. He puts it to circle one. That's a beautiful shot from Andy and Nick, both at two under. Put a little pressure on Mark after that water throw. Our leader is in trouble on 16. Sam trying to make some moments here. Sam needs an air bounce. This one has no water. I don't think he made it either. Look, spotter's running. I can see him. So it is a better shot to just re tee from this tee rather than going to the drop zone, which is the short tee. So I think that's what they're discussing here on the tee. No, I hit a log that's sitting on land and sticking out in the water. Yeah. So just so you know, folks, if you hit a log that's leaning into inbounds, that log is not inbounds. Oh, oh! He hits off the front of the basket, Matt Hill. Wow. Well, that would have Near almost ace. made up if he could have flipped that around and pulled that ace off. That would have definitely made up. What a shot off the bottom basket! All right, so Mark. This is the provisional. Not a provisional. Provisional. I mean, you're always allowed to re-throw. Okay, but there's no provisional. So is this? Are you just deciphering which shot you want to take instead of walking up there and? So his options are yeah. tee pad oh. here for laying shooting three or short tee pad shooting three from the drop zone, correct? Yes, and his disc is clearly in the water. He hit on the bank. However, on the OB sheet, it does say from the long pad, if your drive does not come to rest inbounds, proceed to drop zone with penalty. That said, PDGA rule, you can always throw from your previous lie with penalty. I don't blame him, right? He's seen Andy and Nick do two great shots. He's got a one-stroke lead. Like, he needs to, you know, make sure he picks the best decision. This is a big choice for him. He needs to After watching in. Matt take the same shot and get several discs in the wall. See how he answers. Uh, goes going a little safer. A safe shot towards the short pin. It's up to... Yeah. I mean, if, if you wanted to re T, if you wanted to re T, then you have to okay. use this one. Yeah. Sounds like they're going to yeah. go ahead and play a provisional on that T shot from Mark. He might go over to the short pad and throw his other provisional, record both, both scores, and then go talk to Regis yeah, after the round. Sam also taking a re T. So a little bit of conversation there. Everyone kind of giving their feelings. We're getting down to the end here, right? Oh, so Mark now taking his short T shot. Which is a tricky line, especially to get, try and get to that long basket. So Sam doing the same. Looks like they're both playing provisionals. Now, folks, it's important to read and understand your OB sheet prior to playing the course, playing the hole, prior to showing up to the event. This is why TDs send out emails. Mark... Ooh, oh, off the front of the basket. Oh, he needed that. After all those different shots, whatever his score ends up being, he definitely needed to. And is that Andy? That was Mark coming back from his bounce out. That's wow, Mark. he kicked wow. way over there. Uh, no, that was... Oh, no. Oh, oh, that yes. was his other shot. That He's was his other his shot. Provisional. That's what it is. He's got that one in. We have to see what the final, what they ever... We'll see what we end up getting scored here. This is Andy's birdie shot. Let's put some pressure here. Andy Both Nick and Mark. For the lead. Nick's watching this too, because if he hits this, Nick needs to step back up and answer him here. Mark is going to lose at least one stroke. Big putt here for Andy Martin. Andy Martin in for birdie, puts him at three under. 
Mark, at best, is going to finish with a four here. Drop to two under. We got a new leader, folks. See how Nick responds. Nick's going for his birdie putt as well. Got a chance to uh, give himself a two-way tie at the top of the leaderboard. Taking out some leaves. <gasps> oh, Nick. That's hole one, or I think it was hole one or hole two. Same thing. That power spin putt chain out. That is unfortunate. So Andy will be alone at the top of the leaderboard. Six strokes back to start the round. He now has a one stroke lead going into 17. Looks like Mark ended up taking a five double bogey on that hole after all was said and done. I'm not sure which round or which drives he ended up playing, but took a five. Matt Hill in for birdie, almost aced it. That good recovery. Fun. That's got to yeah. feel good. Ace would have been great, but that's got to help to know that he almost hit the bottom of the basket. All right, here we go. Hole 17, obviously a ton of trees in the way, as is the course here at Portage Lakes Disc Golf Club. Par 3, going about 426 feet. You can see they're playing above par to 3.45. Going to take some shot shaping to get you down to the long basket here. All the way down there, see a nice bit of mulch under the bottom there. See what Andy, our new leader, solo leader of the tournament. Let's see how he uh, responds. Let's see if he can put some pressure on Clearing the dust off. Getting himself a no slip footing here. He should know the course taken care of by Dave Ernst and the Adopt a Hole program. A little dust though. Andy barely makes it past that first tree. Looks like he's up there near the basket. It kicked a little bit, gotten a little rough, but definitely that tree miss uh, put him in a very favorable position. It's going to put some pressure on Nick and Mark to at least answer their drives. Matt Hill. I think he'll like that. Can't yeah. see where it ended up, but it looked like a clean shot. This is a tricky, tricky hole, whether you play the long basket or the short basket. Nick, that looks good. Hold that turn. Looks like it's going to fade out towards the end there. Good shot. Nice shot. I like that. Definitely our closest of the on the go so far. Let's see what Mark can do now. Nick can drop it in from anywhere. Mark. Missed a couple trees there. Looks like he is going. He's going to be short and left, BC. Got a shot to keep his par golf going, though. He could have used that par on 16, but got a shot there. Sam, once again, just looking for some good shots, looking to finish strong. Sam keeping it low. Let's see if it'll turn over. It turned for a bit. I think it faded out to the left. It did look like it lost a little at the end, but should give him an up and down. That bag looks like it's got a few more discs in it. I think we got a few more All right, Matt Hill for his upshot here on 17. In the circle, bullseye. He'll be walking away from here with a three, likely. That's what he wanted to do there. Sam can do. Off. Sam up and into circle one. The full commitment, though. Went right at it. Ooh, Andy. That's a tough shot. Looks like he's going upside down again. Andy just trying to put it up there near the basket. He is now Protect just part lead. Off. Yeah, yeah, he's just now protecting the lead, especially with no one. Let's see Mark taking a long run. I think Nick's got a run at the basket here. Don't ever count Nick out. I've seen him hit putts from 100-plus quite a few times. Not on this one. Not today. Talking himself there. A little frustrated, probably. 
Looks like he's still out too. Left himself a little meat on the backside. Two over through 16. Needs this to uh, make sure Andy's lead doesn't get any bigger. My God. No. No. It's important to keep your head in the game. You got to forget about your previous shots and just walk up to your next shot and focus on that. That seemed like a frustration. That was a mental, I mean, he's a strong putter, but we've had three of those now for Nick. Two chain outs and then that one not quite there. That's a really unfortunate timing, though. He's a great putter, too. Sam Cord in for par. Mm. That is going to give Andy even more room to uh, take the difficult hole 18. We are playing a bonus hole 19, but it's a fairly simple one. So it's this next hole here that really uh, Nick needs to play strong and hope Andy makes a hope Andy makes an error. I mean, really, that's where it's at right now. Nick in for bogey, drops him to one under, gives Andy Martin a two-stroke lead going into 18. Two holes to go. Mark tapping in there. Mo moving on to hole 18. If you head to Portage Lakes any time of the year, this is usually your final hole. For this tournament, we are playing an additional hole, so Nick and Mark have two holes to make a miracle happen. Not the most difficult par four at 587 feet, but it does have a basket on a steep hill that can give players fits if they miss their putt. That upshot is tricky, and good luck on their putt. Andy Martin on the tee with a two-stroke lead with two to go. Looking like a hyzer shot. Hits an early tree, though. If you get past that tree, you can get way up the fairway. I kind of think both Nick and Mark are going to feel a little bit of hope seeing that, right? It looked nice, so I think that's going to give them a little hope here. Let's see what Matt can do. Matt Hill looks pretty good on Heiser. Pushing down the fairway, stays middle fairway. That's a good spot. Yeah. All right, we want to be, let's see what Mark can do now. Maybe not as familiar with this hole in the trickiness of it. Gonna go the forehand, it looks like. Mm, looks like he's lining up the backhand now, actually. Oh. He yeah. opted out of the forehand. I like the forehand gap. Oh, beautiful, Thank Mark. Good choice. Center fairway. Switch. No matter where you put it in the fairway here, there's no gimme to this basket, especially the back basket. It is tricky to get in there. Sam Court on the tee. Pushes that one a little straight. Heiser and back. It's tricky from there. It's a long poke from there, and you got to get quick, quick, through quite a few trees to reach that basket from there. All right, Nick needs one here. Well, I don't think he got it. <laughs> Based off that reaction, Love I think he did. a it. tree. Yeah, it looks yeah. like him and Andy hit the same tree. They're both in trouble. They got a long way to go to get to this basket. Mark He's not out of the question, him. but you, it's a poke and hope. Gusto. Forehand. Oh. Catch is a late tree. That was Heiser and back towards the basket. Andy's in trouble. Two stroke lead, but he is not in an ideal position by any means. Looking like he's lining up a patent pending backhand shot. Quite a few vines and roots and brush in his way. Nose marks there. He's protecting a two stroke lead, but you're right. One. Just accidental branch that only goes 10 feet, and it puts a window that Mark would love to climb right in. So he needs to get this up there to keep that pressure on Mark and Nick. Especially with the last hole. The last hole, hole 19, plays is the easiest hole in the course, in my opinion. You want to hold that lead and not too, put too much pressure on yourself on that last hole. 
I wouldn't imagine any grounds made up on 19 or hardly at all. Uh, so this has got to be the one here that needs, at least Mark and Nick need Andy to uh, have some trouble. Let's see what he does. A little unsure. Push. Yeah. Oh, I think that got up there. He's over on the side of the hill, just before the short basket. Should have a pretty routine up and down from there. Yeah, it's what he wanted to do. He just wanted to get close to that basket, trying to give himself a shot at par, make Mark now here really have to put a nice shot to give himself a, an attempt at the birdie. Mark's in an ideal position here. I'd give anything to get to here on this hole. It's up. It's looking good. And he's over there dancing. Okay. He's going to have some run. Going to put some pressure. Looks like he's going to have a an attempt. Birdie. Sam's like, pick one not to miss. Overhand, backhand. I think we learned this round here, BC, that all it takes is one hole to either put you in or out of an event. Hole 14, not very nice to Matt Hill. Hole 16, bit Mark Fedorenko for sure. Hole 18 is a tricky beast. Let's hope it doesn't bite Andy in the butt. He's got a two-stroke lead, heading towards 18's green. A little wide, but uh, should be able to finish up there. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, coming into this round, especially into the back 10, I mean, Andy played pretty well on the front nine. But really, after round one, it seemed like Nick and Mark, Andy, you know, the highest rated player, struggled a bit, but he has put some pressure on them and shown, you know, everyone here why he is the highest rated player on the card. He's really played a strong second round, um, especially after that tough first round. He could have packed it in, you know. He Absolutely. has really played strong. Lining it up, I think he just would... Probably lay this up. No need to run this and give yourself an extra roll down or stroke. Looks like he walked up there to be strategic about where he's placing this disc because it is on the side of the hill and anything you put up there can roll away if you don't land properly. It's all about angle control of your disc on your upshot here. You know, it looks like he's trying to throw it in. It. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. He rolled at the bottom of the hill. Oh, uh -oh. that is not what he wanted to do there. He's we done two or three of those upside here. down putts. I feel like I would have gone to that one in that case. Let's see what Nick can do now, given that uh, Andy's rolled down a bit. Got some spectators up there. Thank you, everyone, coming out today. Beautiful day. Nick catches a tree. Watching our lead card here at the Summit Spring Fling, Portage Lakes Disc Golf Course. This is a big putt here for Andy, putting for par. On 18's basket. Fedorenko, I believe, in the circle for birdie. Yeah, he needs this, especially with the last hole being not a really a chance to make up a stroke. Uh, they could go in tied. We'd have to see uh, a playoff, which would be exciting. This I could use is... more of this tournament. I'd keep watching these fellas play. Absolutely. This is a big putt for Andy Martin. Let's see if he can put it in. Oh, oh that's why he's he the thousand rated player, folks. Mm. That may have sealed the deal there. Spectators, look at everyone lined up while the fellow disc the golfers. Crowd. Checking it out. I feel like Nick looked a little dejected there. Mark's got to make it. Be a stroke behind. Hope, you know, something terrible happens. But that was a power move by Andy. Matt Hill, uh-oh. Now, good tree. That kind of Had some tough holes today, Matt has. Uh, you know, an amazing disc golfer. I know the score doesn't show, but Matt Hill, one of the best open players in this area. Uh, just a Ooh. tough day. Hole 14 really, uh, really took its toll. It looks like it's it's still taking its toll. He, he didn't think about that putt at all and doinks it just like his brother off the front of the cage. I think uh, Matt Hill would like this round to be over. Yeah. I think at this point, he's a little bummed there's another hole he's got to walk and play. I agree. Damn, same for Sam. I mean, once again, Sam, a great golfer. You know, he's been the 970 rated player above that. And so just a tough second round. Shot two under, I believe, in the first round. So really just struggled in the second round. 
This Mark, is a big, big punt, punt for, for Mark here. Oh, oh no. Mark could have put the pressure on Andy there, but he chains out on the right side. Yeah, that, that may have sealed pretty. it. Whereas there is a little porta potty that's going to be in the way of this next hole, which, you know, someone could hit. You could have an accident. Mark hits that. Let's say one stroke between him and Andy forces a little pressure. But with this, I feel like Andy is uh, going to be looking pretty. Hey, I got a Nick and Mark both shooting three over on our second round. All right, they're going to head, as we said, to our last hole here of the day. I don't think we get a drone here, but uh, last hole of the day. Uh, extra hole to help get uh, more amateur players in. Once again, MA1, MA40, and a lot of our women's card played on Sunday. Two-day tournament. This is going to be a uh, little par around the corner. I don't even know the distance on this, Mike. You see the uh, concrete set up. Using the pre 205. Using the practice basket. I don't think there's any mandos on here, so just a little forehand flick, 200-footer. All Andy wants to do is just... Easy peasy, lemon Whoa. squeezy. Bounce Whoa. it off the What? Almost I am I am almost in disbelief that he did that with such a easy moment. I don't know. Mark, so Mark with Mark an with an opportunity. If he could put it in, he can tie the lead here if Andy misses his birdie putt. I think Andy's outside the circle for two. This is an aceable shot. Mark giving it here. a run. Come on down. Oh, oh Mark. He nice run it. in it, though. He wanted it. Mark bringing that Pennsylvania golf over here. Nick, same thing. Once again, Nick is uh, almost 100 aces. Let's see if this is Nick not going to be one of them. Skip ace. That just didn't Yeah, right. not what he wanted. All right, Matt Hill. Finish strong. Around the back of the restroom there. A little wide. A uh, little push is a little deep, but he's practiced on that basket quite a few times. Probably near one of the pavers, like a lot of practice baskets, a lot of pavers letting you know the distance. Sam for his final shot of the day. Get in in there, Sam. Skip up. Sam parks it. Parks it strong. There's our players. Lots of uh, our spectators here in Portage Lakes giving some applause there. Thank you, everyone, for coming out checking it out i do believe barring the craziest thing ever we may have uh, seen our finish here so as they're wrapping up the putts thank you to heiser flip productions for doing this putting this together our tournament director regis stump summit dga of course northeast ohio disc golf alliance mike nip president of that thank you for all that you do mike um you know, just a great day out here, and I'm really excited. Uh, we had a chance to show off Dave Ernst and all the adopt a whole program. Really great tournament, really good uh, day, and uh, a great round that we got to watch here and commentate, Mike. Thanks for joining me. For this. Absolutely, BC. This has been a pleasure. He's going to finish off here. Take Nick that in for two, puts him at two down, one stroke off of Andy. He just needs to lay it up and put it in. He may run it, but he just he doesn't need to. Brother disc golfer Stain representing there. Thank you, everyone. There's Mike Hill in the background watching his brother. He may have said something to him after that hole. Or do you let him go? Do you think he said something? Well, you know? Let's keep in mind, Matt Hill might have taken a plus 14 on, on hole 14, but he's still beating Mike Hill at this point. That is a valid point. And there we go. Andy Martin lays up, uh, puts it under the basket. Mark's going to run up. He's going to tap out, give Andy his due diligence. His mo oh, a little under the shoulder. There we go. Finishes with a birdie. Nice Nick birdie and Mark, Mark tied with two under. And I think that's all of our players left to put out, which makes Andy Martin's going to put it in there. TD Ladies Regis Stump comes over. 2022 MPO champion, Andy Martin. Woo! Andy Martin takes another victory there. I think that's a career victory. What is that, number 38, I think, or 39 for Andy. Uh, done well. Shout out to Prodigy Disc Golf he did at the end. All right, Mike, thanks for joining us. We see our tournament results here. Uh, great round, Mike. Thanks for joining and watching that. Some crazy scores, but Summit Spring Fling in the books. Absolutely. Thanks, BC. I really enjoyed doing this here with you. Looking forward to uh, see what Heiser Flip Productions does in the future and hope to be involved. Absolutely. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. More great disc golf content coming your way. Here's our final wrap up here. We got Cody Doctoral, Big Cody D having a nice round there. Uh, finishing in fourth place, uh, Elijah and Matt, Sam, Matt Pilch, David Michael, and another Cody there tying out our top 10 
um, for our Summit Spring Fling MPO class. All right, thank you for watching. As uh, JSFE for Gabriel Litterdale and Kyle Miller hooking up for Heiser Flip Productions. Have a great time, everyone.